My dad is a serial killer. Yeah, you read that right. I am the daughter of a man with over 20 confirmed killings. You would never guess that from how I grew up. Our family consisted of my dad, mom, and two brothers. We lived a happy childhood. Probably happier than most kids. My mom was a traditional stay-at-home mom and cooked almost all of our meals from scratch. Dad would come home at exactly 6.30 p.m. every day and we'd eat together as a family. Mom and Dad loved each other. He'd bring her flowers and they left each other notes all the time. Even though Dad worked 10-hour shifts Monday through Friday, he'd be sure to make time to tuck us in every night and read us stories to sleep. He never missed a night. Until my 10th birthday. I remember my 10th birthday as if it was yesterday. My day started with mom making me birthday pancakes. She did that for all of our birthdays pancakes cooked with chocolate chips and topped with sprinkles and whipped cream. We were healthy family and breakfasts were typically fruit, yogurt, eggs, or oatmeal. This is why pancakes for breakfast was such a treat. Where's dad? I asked as I took a bite of my pancakes. He went to work early. She'd said it quickly and tried to change the subject. Are you excited for your party? I nodded, mouth still full of my breakfast. I was having a Spider-Man themed party. I loved Spider-Man. Even as a girl, I always asked for Spider-Man themed things. My parents weren't thrilled about it but my bed covers were Spider-Man theme. And I had so many action figures. I was excited to decorate for my party with Spider-Man plates, tablecloths, and balloons. Around 3 o'clock, my friends started arriving. I was excited but I couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong with my dad. It was Saturday. He wasn't supposed to be at work but mom had said he went in early. As the night rolled on, I swam, opened presents, SND had cake. I finally got my mind off of my missing dad and watched the Spider-Man movies with my friends. Nighttime came and my friends left. I quickly fell asleep on the couch after an enjoyably exhausting day. I woke up in my bed at some point in the middle of the night. I heard something outside that sounded like metal hitting against metal. Rubbing my eyes, I walked over to my bedroom window and peeked outside. Dad was shoveling dirt into a hole. I watched as he wiped sweat off of his forehead and returned the shovel to the shed. He came inside, and I ran back to my bed. Minutes later, I heard his footsteps as he walked past my door and I closed my eyes to feign sleep. My door creaked and dad walked in. He gave me a kiss on my forehead and whispered, happy birthday sweetheart and left. Closing the door quietly, dad would go out late at night and return in the early mornings. Often smelling of dirt SND body odor. But months went by before dad did something really weird. It was another Saturday and dad was gone all day. I don't think he thought my brothers. And I saw him grab the box of trash bags before walking out the door. My brother Joey was five years older than me and told me he thought our dad was cheating. I found an earring in his truck. How do you know it wasn't mom's? I asked, anger filling me. I didn't want anyone talking bad about dad. It was Pink Star. When have you ever seen mom wear those kind of earrings? Plus, he keeps a change of clothes and a pillow in the back. I think he sleeps at someone else's house. He stays out all night and doesn't come home till morning. You don't know that. I yelled. I ran to my room and slammed my door. I cried as I thought of the idea that my dad was cheating on my mom. They seemed to have such a wonderful relationship. They never fought and always talked about what bothered them. I remember making a disgusted face every time they kissed in front of me. I'd exclaim, 
EW. One night, dad left again. My brothers came into my room. My older brother devised a plan to catch him. Of course my younger brother, Liam, wanted to be involved. But I thought he was too young, at only six years old, to be a part of our plan. When he threatened to tell on us tomorrow mom, we had no choice but to comply. Joey said that we would hide in the bed of the truck. Dad kept a large blue tarp over it so we could easily hide. He was already gone that night so we decided to hide the following day. He was going out almost every weekend at that point. He snuck out Friday night at 9 p.m. We waited under the tarp, hearts beating out of our chests. The stress of it all got to Liam, and he let out a small cry. I slapped my hand over his mouth. Quiet. He's coming, I sternly whispered. Sure enough, Dad was getting in the car. He drove and drove. I guessed it was over two hours before he stopped. When we heard the truck door slam shut, we snuck a peek. We seemed to be at some sort of hardware store, but not the Lowe's or Home Depot that I was used to seeing. We hid and waited. Dad drove for a long time before stopping. All I heard was him getting out of the car and the sounds of shoes on gravel. After being sure he walked far away from view, we peeked again. Where are we? I asked. Joey looked around. I don't know. Looks like a cabin or something. This is fucking weird. Hey, no cursing. I was protective of our youngest brother and didn't want him repeating the bad things Joey said. Sorry, but it's true. I'm gonna follow him. I grabbed Joey's arm. Wait, what if he sees you? Joey shrugged. I'll call him an asshole for cheating on mom. I sat in the bed hugging Liam to my chest. He had tears rolling down his cheeks. We waited for what seemed like years. And then I saw her. I saw a figure running in the darkness. It didn't look human. Until it came closer. It started running to the truck. I watched as a woman felt against the driver's side of the truck. She was bleeding and naked. There were bruises all over her thighs and neck. She was wheezing. In her state of fear, she didn't notice my brother and I. When she couldn't get the door open, she started running away towards the road. And that's when I started screaming for Joey. Joey. I jumped out of the truck, telling Liam to remain silent. Joey. I was barefoot, running up to the cabin. I got to the door and opened, screaming as soon as I saw what was on the other side. My dad was holding a knife against a naked, thin woman. He dropped the knife and turned around. Kathy, what what are you he was cut off and blood started pouring from his mouth. I felt like throwing up. Joey had stabbed our dad in the back. We have to get out of here. We have to call the police. When I didn't move, Joey yelled at me. Get in the truck. We have to call the police. Kathy, go. It finally hit and I ran back to the truck. Thank God this was the early 2000s and my dad had a cell phone. We had no idea where we were. There's girls in there. Kathy. There's so many girls. It's been 15 years and I still wake up with nightmares. It took me a long time but I looked at the crime scene photos. My dad had been torturing, assaulting, and killing girls for years. He kept them locked up in a cabin, with barely enough food to survive. When he first started, he buried his first victims in the backyard. It must have gotten hard to keep that up because the police only found two bodies in our yard. My brother Joey is the reason some of those girls made it out. I still have no idea how he snuck in and grabbed a knife without my dad seeing. He hasn't coped well with the grief. He turned to drugs and alcohol to try to get the thoughts out of his mind. 
He ended up taking his own life a year ago. This is just a reminder that anyone can be a killer. Even a family man with three wonderful kids.